95 Ford 250 7.5 liter truck. First thing that happened, guys, is I was driving. You know, I pushed in the clutch. Bang. Went all the way to the floor. I said, oh, man, there goes my clutch. I drove it home without the clutch. Did some investigation, and I seen the clip had broke off the push rod. The push rod was still sticking out here like this. And I was able to push this push rod in and out by hand. So I says, well, it ain't this. It's just a little plastic guy holding it, right? So I says, man, I hear all those stories about people. It's always, could be something easy. So I get pretty excited. $2.90, $2.80 from Ford dealership for the little clip. Put it on. Go around driving. She's working fine. Next day, we're driving to go check out some rims and tires for my truck. And bang, she does it again. Oh man, that clip couldn't have broke, guys. We just put it on two days ago. Well, it turns out this time, this is plastic. It turns out this time, he broke along with the clip again. So you can see the clip barely hanging on. See? But this time, he broke. So there's no fixing that part. To get this push rod, it has to come with the master slave cylinder. You might be able just to find him separate. I didn't do much investigating on that. The reason is, is because you should be able to push that guy in. Now it's not that it's easy, but it should push. And she's not pushing. So I'm gonna go ahead and change out the master clutch slave cylinder. Um, and it comes with the new one of these as well. But since I'm gonna go ahead and do that, I figured, you know, 260, 270,000 miles on this truck. I'm going to go ahead and change the external slave cylinder as well. Just because if this guy went out, to me, eventually, he's next. And you got to bleed the system. So why why do the job twice if we're going to be taking things off? We might as well just change them out and, and be done with it is the way I see it. So I didn't have to change the external slave cylinder but I figured it would be be wise since we plan on taking it up in the mountain soon so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go through the steps of how we did it this is my first time bleeding a hydraulic system so I may get some things wrong I'm hoping I don't um, and uh, if I do hopefully somebody leaves comments and correct what they what I should have did or could have done better so all right guys this is get out underneath here and get started all right guys there's the slave external slave cylinder <clears throat> and you got your two clips here so Bridget just pried pried up hang on hun. she pried up over here to push these clips out see and then once you do each one out you grab it with the other hand and this begins to slide out. Now, I could not find a, a what were we looking for, Bridget? The, dra the drain. The drain plug. I guess this one don't have one. My new one comes with it, so I'll be bleeding it that way. But what I'm gonna try to do is take this off and disconnect this line here so that we can let the fluid drain into a pan. Uh, I can also maybe try uh, sucking it out with some kind of vacuum, you know, to get it out. But you're still going to leak brake fluid somewhere. So I'm figuring my best option would be just to connect them from here and let it drain out. We got to put the new one in anyway. Um, again, there was nothing wrong with mine. My master slave cylinder went out, but I'm going to go ahead and change this guy anyway since we're down here. Plus, bleeding it. I probably would have to take it off anyway, because uh, there's no there's no uh, screw head to uh, let out the air. I like the new one, so go ahead, bridge and see if you can work that sucker out. Easy. She doesn't want to spring on you. There you go. You got it. It's already free, huh? 
There you go. There you go. I'll bring that baby down here. Now we can see what we're working with. All right, guys. We took out the cotter pin. Next, we're going to use a 332nd Allen wrench. The book called for a 332nd punch, hole, hole punch. I don't have one. But that's going to work, too. You're probably going to have to tap it, Bridge. She's not going to push out that easy, Huns. Uh, okay, we got the cotter pin backed out a little bit. And now we're going to use with the 332nd Allen wrench. Go ahead, Bridge. And I'm just going to twist and pull it out. Also, I'd like to add, we, we kind of set it right here. So that way she had something sturdy. And then we just tapped it out from this way. There you go. Now, all this and... and careful. There you go. See, there's no bleed screw. Any of this thing. So I guess normally if you wanted to bleed this, you'd have to bench press. Push it up and down to bleed it. But the other one I got, just kind of hold out that bridge so that way this shit comes out. I'm going to open the cap. And we'll get ready to put on the other one. <clears throat> Alright guys. Here's the Slave Master Cylinder here. I left the top on when we did that process, guys. Below. Uh... Just how fluid from squirting everywhere, and then I climbed up, opened the top, and she poured out. But we're gonna change that. We got the two bolts here one, and one more below them, too. And you got your clutch line there, and the clutch line is gonna be the same as the one on bottom. It's gonna have a little uh, pin just holding it through. So we just gotta tap him out. Uh, and reinstall, guys. Alright, Bridget busted that top nut up there. And now she's working on the bottom one there. So, then what we'll do once we get that off, guys, we got it drained. I don't know if you can see. But once we get that off, because again, there's a another pin under here. I'm going to go ahead and just pull the whole line and everything, feed it out through up here, guys. That's what I'm going to do. That way we can put the other one on. And then just slap it in. So. Uh, and I'll bleed it. I'll bleed it with it, the system on here. And show you how we do that. It's a time process. but. Alright guys. So we got the cutter pin out. All we did was lay it here on the toolbox. Use a Allen wrench. 332nd. And just. Tapped it. I didn't even use a hammer, bro. I just used pliers. Yes, sir. And then pulled it out the other end. That's it, guys. I just now we to take this retaining clip off. And he's for your push rod and then the control. But he's going to clip right there. Marry him up. So he's nice. and uh, The new one, see, she don't come with that. Go ahead, Bridge. So Bridgie says it's just gonna pop off real easy. I'm gonna go see if I can solve robbery off. His, his, his own <laughs> weed he'll whacker. Get, he'll, he'll get all mad at me. <laughs> he ain't got no sense of humor. Right. Sell it to him, bro. <laughs> Look what I have laying around the house. Your weed whacker. I wanted to see if you wanted to buy it back. <laughs> all right, guys. We put on the new rubber that it come with. Gonna set it in there and I'll put the clip. Okay, let me check both ends. So, put on your melon wrench. I'm just tapping it. Tapping it to make sure. Just get in there good. Mm -hmm. Hey, 
maybe go a little more. Good. What do you think, Bridge? Looks good. Another little look top just to make sure. Because that's just going to keep the pressure. I've got a little gap there. And just push a little more there, but that's okay. Should have made that thing a little longer. There was no way we're going to get it evenly gapped. But you get the idea. There it is. Okay, that one's down, Bridge. Um, we're gonna hold this about 30 degrees, and then we're gonna go ahead and, and dump recommended fluid, which is that's what the book calls for, and that's what I got. And we're gonna dump it inside the part where the hose connects. Get as much as we can in there, fluid right away before we connect it back to the main line. Went ahead and put the new rubber on. Alright, we'll get this in and then when we go to install this up in here, back to your tranny, because it's an external, she's just going to slide right back on around the housing unit there. We do not want to take off this plastic, you don't cut it, the instructions also say that, but I'll throw that in there. We'll cut it once it's up in there, guys. And go from there and bleed it out, we'll show you how we bleed it. Be right back. Alright guys, what we did is... We used a funnel, and then while we were pouring, the funnel didn't quite fit, but we made sure the funnel was very clean, and I pinched it here where the cotter goes and poured slow, and then as I, as I was pouring, I poured a little at a time, I let go here, and you can actually hear the air bubbles already pumping out. And and things like that, and then fluid started coming out. So you're gonna lose some fluid. That's how we get the the quart bottle, quart size. Um, and then I just did the same process. Held it here, Bridget held the yellow cup. We poured, let it go. This time, no air came out, and it was just pushing out fluid. So that's to me good enough, and it's probably got enough. But it ain't gonna take much. It's not a big cylinder. So. We're going to hook up that line. Um, we're going to put the cotter pin in. Or the pin to hold the line. Now the cotter pin. That. Cotter pin here. He's going to slide. Through inside there. Okay. So once we put him in that little hole, I'm going to show you after this. Once we put him in there, this cotter pin is going to slide right through that hole. And we'll have to tap him in, but he will slide in there. And then that's when you, we're going to open up the back ends to spread it out. Okay, and the cotter pin is going to go right in there, which this line we're going to put on is going to fit into there. We'll do that now and show you after it's done. <clears throat> All right, guys. Got the cotter pin in. Or the... I don't even know the correct name to call that. Somebody could probably put in the comments what's the correct name to call that pin. But anyways, we got the pin in. And now we're going to insert this guy through here, guys. And we're just going to tap him in with the pliers. Actually, just push him in. See, he's already starting. And once he's already started, just tap him in home. That's it. Now, go ahead and turn it so we can see the back side. Now we'll go ahead and just bend those guys. That's it. Then we'll slide them back on here, guys. Okay? Back to the transmission. Okay. Alright guys. Got the cotter bin bent. As you can see. That's all it took. No Bridget, go ahead. 
We're going to slide it back on. We do not have the brake line tied down to the frame yet, so we have some play here. I'll have to put stress on that line. They'll probably kink real easy, guys. It's pretty dusty. No, 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 no. That's yeah, fixed. just like that. There you go. Okay, I'll push here. Cut. Let's stop with it. You got it. Uh, you just got to beat it, tap it. We have to open those prongs up to slide it on. Okay. Now we're just working with the screwdriver. Okay, she's going in. Just like the same way we took it off. On those prongs, we go some more love taps. She likes to get love tapped on one then. Crazy. <laughs> She's got to be secure. It's not just, all the way home. just about there. It's there. Make You're sure. hitting metal. It's right there. Let's make sure. I want to make sure we got our shit right. She's there. Is it hitting up, touching up in there? It's hitting the bottom side of the metal here, but not the top. That's okay, as long as it's hitting, so you can kind of see how that one's got. Right, it's not like that. Okay, it's closer? Yep. Closer. She's, she's not touching. Right? There's a little gap still. A little gap. Mm -hmm. The top one is closer. I think she's there. Top one the same? She's yeah, it's now it's now touching on the bottom where that curve is. Right. How's the top one look? Good. Look good? Mm hmm Okay. Now where's my cutters? I don't know how we're gonna get that top one. We might be able to spin it. Why can't it stay there for when you need to take it off next time? It, or you just buy new next time? Well, we had to take it off. I don't know, I might get stuck on something, ain't it? Shouldn't be having to take it off again. Should we? I wouldn't think so. No, I wouldn't either. Unless it goes bad. But I don't like the way this clip. It's there. There she goes. See? Mm -hmm. There she goes. I mean, maybe the chance is a bit, I don't know. I say it's my first time changing it. The one we took off was already broke down there. So to me, it would make sense to twist this thing around and cut them. Because when you go to push, she's gonna push this out and if for some reason it gets stuck again, it's not gonna push. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. All right, let's cut it. I'd like to even get it closer to there. Than that. Get as close as I can, and then I 
think once you push it, you'll be able to, uh, I'll be able to uh, get it even more. But as long as I get it close to where she's not puncturing that boot. That's her hands. Even if the back side opens, as long as she opens, because we don't want to break that tab. And I can't really tell. There she goes. Aha. Uh -huh. Now we got our back secure. Okay, let me see. I'm gonna stay down here. Oh man, that bridge is dump up there. You can see where she's gonna be dumping. And there's a bleeder screw up on top of the slave cylinder that I'm gonna go ahead and open up. And as she's dumping, I'm gonna have a pan underneath to catch the fluid. Um, and then I'll tighten it, let her dump a little bit more. And when she gets close to the top, I'll open it again, and, and that's that's me starting the procedure of bleeding it. I'm not just gonna dump fluid in the reservoir and 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 start pumping on it, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and have her dump the fluid in there. Let's see. Let me get my Allen wrench. Go ahead and get your fluid. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. And the Allen wrench size, I don't recall, so my apologies. But before you get under here, you could check it right away up on, you know, what size that way you make sure you got the right one. Alright, so we got the Allen wrench on. And we don't even have the rod or the internal hooked up in the cap yet. We're just going to dump fluid so that way it can start to bleed. Let me know when you got it topped off, Bridge. Okay, I'm gonna start pouring. Okay, go ahead. It's gonna make a little mess, so expect okay. expect that. It's all the way to the top? Yes. Okay, now we're gonna turn this guy loose. Did it go down? No. Now it's going down. Okay, good. Let gravity do its job, you guys. There, see the fluid? Tighten it back up. How low is it? It's about halfway. Okay, put put a little bit more. Okay. Got a little bit? Yeah. Okay, leave it. Let me see how fast it comes out now. Son of a gun, it's hard to put on with one hand. Nice, steady drip. A little drip. Tell me when it gets about halfway again. And I think the way she's skipping on the drip. That's the air coming out. See, nice steady drip. Halfway yet? Oh, yeah. Okay, it's halfway. Okay. Alright, guys. It says here Clutch Master Cylinder Nuts. ZF. S5475 speed, 89 to 124 pounds torque. All the others, 15 to 20. That's a big difference. I don't even know if I have the ZF S475 speed, to be honest. But I went ahead and set my torque wrench to 89. 
And that's what I'm going to tighten them to because I do definitely know it's a 5 speed. Um, on the recommendations, I'll leave that up to you guys. You might have to further investigate. I'm not going to waste my time investigating. If the torque wrench does not start torquing at 89 and I feel those nuts are snug enough, snug enough I'm going to go ahead and just stop them there. Because it's not holding the world together. But you got to remember there is a lot of pressure being involved with pushing the clutch and, and all that. Especially in a three quarter ton. So that's the reason I'm going with 89 minimum. And if not I'll just leave it there and I'll check it later. But that's what I'm going to end up doing guys. It's going to be a slow process. Because we're, well, the way I like to do it is I like to hit top and bottom. I don't just tighten one and then go to the next. Make sure it's nice and the sequence. And I have a torque set, so once once we get it there. Let's see, do we have another short extension? Yeah. Okay. It has to be a short one though. Let's type it. Like I said, if she doesn't start clicking, I might call it good. Oh yeah, she clicked. She clicked. Okay, so I'm gonna call that good. And I'll finish stroking off the bottom. Once she clicks, that's it. We're good on the torque specification. And then we'll continue bleeding it, guys. There she is. Okay. So now we're going to insert this clip notch right there into that notch. She's there. She's just barely going to hang on there, guys. Now I'm going to insert the push rod. And we're going to have to stop for this process, guys. But next, we're going to insert this push rod. Back it up. Into here. Insert that push rod into there, guys. Then... We're going to connect him to our clutch. Man, this is so hard. Right there. Actually, I need to take this guy off too. So I'll get a big screwdriver and finish propping him off. I'm breaking him off. Because the end of the new push rod's got a clip, and he'll clip onto that, okay? All right. All right, guys. We got it connected as you can see. That's what we're after there. Make sure the push rod snapped on. Should make a nice clean slap. So tight in here guys, I would have had Bridget. I would have recorded while she did it, but real tight for both of us to get under here, so. But that's what you're after, okay? I'm gonna push this part by hand, okay? And she's gonna show you the bubbles coming up. We wanna make sure we do that till we see no more bubbles. Okay. See the bubbles? Yep. Bubble stopped. Bubbles? Yep. Bubbles stopped. Stopped. Yeah, I can tell because she grabs it. Okay. She grabs it. Wait a few seconds. How's the fluid looking? It's a giddy, It's about a fourth full. Okay, we don't want to get let it get too low. Getting low. 
It's the same. Did you see a lot of bubbles? Yep. Okay. There is bubbles, but not as many. Right. Get all that fluid in. Oh, there is a whole bunch. Stop. Yep. And I'm letting off real slow too, guys. I want to get that fluid in there. How's the fluid looking? It, we're still doing okay. Okay. Stopped. No bubbles? Yeah, there's bubbles, but it stopped bubbling. Okay. All right, guys. We're going to go ahead and begin bleeding the system now. Might get a little messy, but that's how it goes. So what I'm going to do is have Bridget pump it five times. She's going to pump it real slow, guys. Nice, steady, slow pumps four times. On the fifth one, she's going to hold it, and I'm going to crack open my valve to let the air and fluid out, tighten it back up. She'll get out, check the fluid, fill it up, and we're just going to keep doing the same process. Go ahead, Bridget. And it's just like doing brakes, guys. But we're doing it on the vehicle. Just going to pump real slow. How does it feel right now? Uh, like, is there, like it's not connected to nothing. Right. Keep going. Let me know when you're there. Nice, slow, steady reps. So she said it doesn't feel like it's connected to anything, which is okay. Plus, we don't even see it moving here. So we know we got air in the system. You're probably going to hear it. You're holding? All right, go ahead and check the fluid. Actually, you're probably all right. Count to 10 seconds. Okay, let it back up slowly? Yep, slowly. Holding. Holding. Oh, yeah, there's the air squirting out. All right, key point, guys, is you want to make sure you still have fluid in your reservoir. She checked it. We had topped it off because we know we're going to be... Uh, doing this test so uh, I barely got down to halfway which is good because we don't want to lose fluid while we're doing this now I only had her fill it up to three quarter and this is the third time you're pumping right yeah this is the third time this is going to take some time but that's alright we got more time than money so this is why we're doing it it's going to get messy. You can see her squirting over there. Got the pan, trying to catch it. <laughs> we want a nice steady flow. I might even push on that guy, but you can see it squirting. And then I tighten it right back up. Okay, babe. See, we should see a steady stream coming out. Not not it squirting that's the air still working its way out that's what takes that's what makes it such a timely process so you just gotta have patience and keep working it when she first started she was actually using her hand pushing the pedal down pulling it up pushing it down and then I came down here and I started pushing this guy and pumping him but you can see it moving now so we're gaining been doing this now for about 10, 12 minutes. Like I said I wasn't going to have these guys sit there. Okay? Watching the whole process. But you get the idea. See, you can still see the air coming out of there. Okay, Hans. Check the fluid. And that's it. We're just going to keep doing this process till she finally stiffens up. And again, I can see it moving here. So those are key things you want to look for. Um, if not, I'll start the process again. Make sure there's plenty of fluid. That's the main thing. 
and then I'll just grab it here. <laughs> Squeeze it. It's a lot easier than it sounds though, trust me. For people with weak hands, you might you might want to put you a little two by four or something in there. That way when you go to push, that isn't digging in your hand. But for me, like I said, I was just grabbing it with both thumbs and squeezing that thing, man. Gotta work it. <laughs> well, we'll get her. And then once we do, I'll uh, show you what the clutch is doing and, and everything. Like I said, I bet you right now she could probably start it, you know. But I want to make sure all my air is out of there. Make sure. It's very processed time for doing it on the truck. But that's okay. I got more time than money, so... This is the process I'm doing. Alright guys, we're going to go cycle through the gears. She's getting second, third, fourth, fifth. While we're sitting here. But we're not getting reverse, okay? I want you to see we've been working on it. So this is what... Don't get discouraged is what I'm trying to tell you. Alright, go ahead Bridge. Second, right? And you can hear her cycling through the gears. They're going in gear. Hear that? Hear that? That's not good. That's not. We gotta keep bleeding it. We gotta keep bleeding it. So we're gonna continue, guys. When you watch, I'll show you the difference. But right there, we're not all the way there yet. We're getting there, though. Alright guys, uh, we haven't put on the silver uh, thing that goes around this yet, but that's easy stuff. Like I said, I sat here pushing my hand till we saw no bubbles. I also bled it from up on top. Alright Bridge, go ahead and cycle through the gears. You can hear everything cycling. And they're also going pretty easy. All right, go ahead and start it. And they go through the gears. She ran all the gears pretty smooth. Yep. And there's no grinding. So I'm going to call that good. We'll take it for a ride. After I put on the little silver boot. Alright guys. Thanks for viewing. Hope this helps. Um, God bless and be safe out there.